This video series is brought to you by the ASU Writing Center within the Academic Support Network. Thank you for joining me as we discuss part one of APA Citation. This video, our first in the series, will discuss the importance of citations and APA. Let's get started. We wanted to open with this quote. Credible citation practice is more than a matter of selective quotation, fluent paraphrase, accurate summary, avoidance of plagiarism, and precise punctuation. It is an act of building community, collaboratively constructing shared knowledge. This quote emphasizes that citation practices allow your readers to understand who you are thinking with, which constructs an academic community. Let's cover some basics so we can better understand citations and citation styles. A citation is a formal reference to a published or unpublished source that an individual consulted and obtained information from. A citation, both in text and on a full citation entry list, allows a writer to list details like the author's name or publication year that refer back to the original source. The format and details of a citation can depend on the writing assignment, discipline, and professor. You'll notice as we go over APA style that there are different editions. Citation styles are updated periodically for a few reasons. First, technology changes. In the past, typewriters could not do italics, so titles had to be underlined. We no longer have that problem, so now titles can be italicized. Also, information outlet changes. Citation styles needed to figure out how to cite Twitter once it became a reputable source. It is worthwhile to note that citation styles don't publish every little change. They publish bulk changes when they have enough for it to be worthwhile to share the new best practices. Finally, why do we stress citing sources? There are several reasons to cite sources. First, to convey your credibility. In other words, citing helps to communicate your trustworthiness, build a reputation, and maintain your integrity as a writer. Second, you will engage in scholarly community and contribute your perspective or knowledge to that community. Third, to give credit to other researchers and acknowledge their ideas. This helps to also show how you might be building or expanding upon other researchers' ideas and arguments in a particular field. Fourth, it allows your readers to find the sources you used in your writing in case they wish to investigate or read more about a particular source. Fifth, citing provides guidelines for quoting and paraphrasing materials, formatting your paper, creating a list of sources used, and more, which helps to create a consensus or an agreed upon standard for how writers should format and present information. Finally, it helps to avoid plagiarism. This is important both as a student and a professional. It also connects back to the first point of conveying your credibility as the author or writer. To help you think about and avoid plagiarism, make sure that you give credit to a source if you present an idea, definition, statistic, recommendation, etc. that is not your original thought. For all information, you need to cite sources using a citation style approved by your instructor. The citation style is a series of formulas about how to cite sources and shows readers where your evidence came from. Be sure you have carefully cited sources and followed the citation formulas exactly. This is one way to avoid plagiarism and maintain academic integrity. Let's talk a little bit about self-plagiarism. To discuss this, we want to read a quote from the American Psychological Association publication manual. Some institutions may consider it self-plagiarism if a student submits a paper written for one class to complete an assignment for another class without permission from the current instructor. Using the same paper in multiple classes may violate the academic integrity policy, honor code, or ethics code of the university. However, incorporating previous classwork into one's thesis or dissertation and building on one's own existing writing may be permissible. Students who wish to do this should discuss their ideas with their instructor or advisor and follow their university's honor code, ethics code, or academic policies when reusing their previous work. Please note here that communication is prioritized when considering self-plagiarism. If you have questions about reusing your old work, please be in conversation with your professors. 
Now that we've gone over some general information about citations, let's talk more specifically about APA. The American Psychological Association, or APA, is a professional organization that created the style guide often referred to as APA style. APA style specifies guidelines for formatting papers and provides writers with a system for referencing resources. For more information, you can visit the APA style website. Now that we've reviewed some information about citations and where APA comes from, let's look into some of the key elements of APA style in the seventh edition. First off, what is special about APA? APA style covers the aspects of scholarly writing most pertinent to writing in psychology, nursing, business, communications, engineering, and related fields. It specifically addresses the preparation of draft manuscripts being submitted for publication in a journal and the preparation of student papers being submitted for a course assignment. We can see here which fields often use APA and which papers it can help you format. Whether you use APA style for a single class or throughout your career, we encourage you to recognize the benefits of a conscientious approach to writing. We hope that by learning more about APA style, you think critically about where your resources come from and how you're attributing their work. There are lots of different resources when discussing APA style. The remainder of this presentation is grounded in the publication manual of the American Psychological Association, 7th edition. All page numbers listed on the slides refer to the book. Please use the book for further explanation. You can access a copy of this book either online or in person at your writing center. The 7th edition was published in the fall of 2019 and included changes such as removing the running header from student papers. It is best for you to clarify with your professor and or check your course syllabi to determine whether you should be using the 6th or 7th edition. Citations in general are about paying attention to the details. As we go through the material, note that all periods, commas, italics, etc. are used intentionally and follow formulas. In your own writing, you will need to focus on the details. It is common to have questions about APA style and citation. There are many resources that can support you in finding answers. You can go to the APA style website, you can use the ASU Library LibGuides on APA 7th edition, or you can reference Purdue OWL, the online writing lab that has many resources about APA 7th edition. You can also talk with your professors. They will likely have experience writing in these citation styles either professionally as, or as a student themselves. Please be cautious using citation generators. They can only do so much and can often have typos. They pull from the information available to them, but that may not always be accurate. Be cautious using AI to create citations. ChatGPT has historically been ineffective at creating accurate citations. If you choose to use either of these methods for citations, please proofread everything and check it with the APA citation manual. These are the sources that we use to put together this video. And finally, our online study hub is a great place to post questions about this video and get a tutor or peer response if you have any questions about anything we covered. If you would like to continue learning about APA style or find a good resource for answering questions you may have, visit the APA style website. There you can find reference examples, sample papers, and guidance for bias-free language. Thank you for joining us to discuss the importance of citations and APA, and we hope to see you in our next segment, Formatting Your Paper. Thank you.